So um, your TI-84 or TI-83 calculator will graph for you. And it won't do it as nicely as something like Desmos.com will, but obviously there are issues in vetting like students be on their computer during tests, for example. So we still do make use of that, it, that being your calculator in this classroom. So, our topic for today. I'll write graphing on a TI-84, but if you have a TI-83, it's identical. And there's TI-89, is it? Uh, that's also pretty much identical. So let's just state a problem to get us started. Graph the equation y equals x squared plus x minus 1 using your calculator. And again, I'm big on using technology, and I will talk a little about, you know, graphs as we go through this course, but mostly when we want a graph, we'll do it technologically. So first thing first, let me find the calculator. So you'll, when you look at your calculator, see something like this. Obviously, this screen will be above the keyboard instead of next to it. But graphing is done up here. You see this button up here, Y equals. When we press that button, we'll get to this page. So I guess everything's being a little pokey today, but I guess I'll write this step by step. To graph on the calculator, we press that button to get to the graphing menu. Oh, man, it changed zoom and suddenly it feels like I'm pressing twice as many buttons to get where I want to go. But here we are back again. Here we were back again. Let's try this a second time. Here we are back again. So entering an equation, I mean, you have your options, right? There's the plus. maybe over here, so I'm not blocking the screen. You see plus, you see minus. You see multiplication. You see division. You're seeing a lot of pluses and minuses and multiplications because there's this weird input lag. Sorry about that. And up here, you see this sort of cryptically labeled button, X comma T comma the Greek letter phi comma N. This button is your variable button. So 
in this problem we're looking at, considerately turning into kind of a, a problem, but here we go. In this problem we're looking at, we want to enter x squared plus x minus 1. And this variable button is going to produce the x. And I particularly mention that because our calculator, you do see x down here in green, but if you use the x down here, you're going to get an error message. It has to be the x we produce with this variable button. x squared. So part of graphing on your calculator is just getting used to where everything is. The square button is over here. Plus x. And was it minus one? Yeah. Minus one. Uh, just to preempt the very common error, the minus button is here. This button down below that looks like a minus button is a negative button. And you'll get an error message if you use it. And then we press the graph button. And a graph is generated. And this graph might look nicer or less nice on your own calculator because they produced like five different variations of this TI-84. There's the 84 and there's the 84 plus and there's the 84 plus silver and there's the 84 plus CE. So you might not see exactly this, but you should see something that looks basically like this. And that's the fundamentals of graphing on the calculator. Go to y equals, enter your equation, y equals whatever, and then press the graph button. But there are things still to talk about. I mean, that would be an awfully brief lesson if that was all there was. Let's preemptively troubleshoot. The number one error we see graphing on our calculator Something that occurs when students are asked to graph fractions. Graph something that looks like this. So the thing about your calculator is that your calculator will faithfully follow the order of operation. PEMDAS, parentheses, exponential, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, in that order. So what will happen is that students will see x minus 2 divided by x plus 4 and enter it into the calculator. And the pernicious thing here is that the student has made an error, but the calculator is not going to give them an error message. A lot of times, if you screw up on your calculator, you will know about it, because your calculator will tell you this is bad syntax. 
but you type doesn't make any sense. Here, our calculator will not object to this. I wish I had, ah, I do have dry erase. So rather than keep going back and forth, I'll just, make notes for myself to remind myself when I'm graphing. X, I'm um, sorry, I shouldn't skip through steps. I used the clear button to get rid of the stuff that was there. And then I typed X minus two that did not used to have this input delay. Uh, the changes they made to the licensing might be causing problems, but it's something we'll learn to live with. We type x minus two divided by x plus four. We press graph. Our calculator gives us a graph. As I said, even though there's an error, our calculator is not warning us that there's an error. And that's why this kind of thing tends to cause so many issues. Um, I sort of gave it away, but what is the error? Why do I say this isn't producing the graph I want to produce? Dividing two by x. It's dividing two by x because, as I say, our calculator is going to scoop to this. We follow the order of operations. It's going to see that we've got division. And it's going to say, okay, division comes first. The first thing I'm going to do is take that two and that x and divide them. And actually, division is not what we want to happen first here. Division is what we want to happen the last. First, we want to do that subtraction, then we want to do that addition only as our final step do we want to do division. So by doing the division first, the calculator, I mean, you can't even say the calculator is making an error. The calculator is doing exactly what I told it to, but what I told it to do is not what I want it to do. So to deal with this, we are going to make liberal use of the P part of PEMDAS. P stands for parentheses. There are a few uh, alternate memory aid, letter strings. PEMDAS is what I learned as a child. Um, so the first letter, P, stands for parenthesis. Your calculator will deal with parentheses first because it's following PEMDAS. So if we want that x minus 2 to happen before the division, we can put it in the parentheses. And if we want this x plus 4 to happen before division, we can put it in the parentheses. And the parentheses in your calculator are right down here. So if we put x minus two 
in parentheses. And then we put x plus four in parentheses, and we close those. Now, when we press graph, we'll get a different picture, and we'll get the correct picture. And this is always going to be an issue when you're graphing a fraction. And I say that what you should probably get used to doing is just always put the top in parentheses, always put the bottom in parentheses. If you get into that habit, this error will disappear. So that's one thing I wanted to talk about. Another thing I want to talk about is messing around with your viewing window. But before we do that, does anybody have questions about what's come so far? I never know how to interpret silence, but I guess I'll have to take you at your word or at your lack of words and go on. Let's um let's go ahead and do a problem from the class work and I'll use this as an excuse to um to talk about messing with viewing windows. So in the class work we give you this problem. The velocity by of a drag racer and we are measuring velocity in miles per hour, x seconds into a race, is y equals 340 times x divided by x plus 3. And all the class work is doing, I mean, I shouldn't say all, but it's asking you to create the graph. There is no, you're not being asked to solve for anything or do any algebra, just generate the graph using your calculator. Although you're also being told only draw the part of the graph that makes sense. And we'll come back to that instruction in just a moment. But for now, let's go to our calculator and let's generate this graph. And I'm saying us uh, advisedly, I, I encourage people to follow along. So the first thing we see, and this goes back to what we were just talking about, is that we have a fraction, something divided by something else. And once again, if we get sloppy and type 340x, divided by x plus 3, then we are in trouble because we've made an error and our calculator isn't going to tell us we've made an error. It's going to go ahead and generate this graph, but the graph it generates is not the graph we want. So taking the advice that I gave just a few minutes ago, 
let's put the top of this fraction in the parentheses and the bottom of this fraction in the parentheses. And now we hit graph and not a lot happens. Um, depending on where you're sitting in the room, you might be able to see that this y-axis seems to have suddenly turned blue, but we're certainly not seeing a graph of a speed of a drag racer's velocity. So what's happening here? No, I, I, that was going to be a rhetorical question, but why not? What's happening here? You're really not going to have to see what the graph does. That is exactly correct. My window isn't big enough. So you see by default, our x variable goes from negative 10 to positive 10, and our y variable goes from negative 10 to positive 10. And remember that y is the velocity of a racing car. And we might not have a lot of intuition about how fast a racing car goes, but I think we can agree that it probably goes faster than 10 miles per hour. So we need to be see it, we need this y to be greater than 10. And I usually, when I'm faced with this situation, I usually go to window and try to mess around with stuff manually. Our calculator does have zoom options. I have never had a lot of luck with these. I'll tell it to, you know, zoom whatever zoom effect and it will well we can give it a try yeah i i zoom fit is doing something but it's not really doing what i like it to do in particular velocity in this context has to be positive, um, and time has to be positive. It doesn't make sense to ask what happens, you know, negative seven seconds after the race begins. That means we're stuck in this first quadrant, and this viewing window our calculator gave us which seems to mostly be showing us this second quadrant is not very useful to us. And stuff like this, I'm going to go to Zoom Standard, and I'm going to reset the viewing window that way. And now I'm going to go to the window, and I'm going to mess around. X-min and X-max, I mean, X-min can be zero. X is time, time can't be negative. So it really doesn't make sense to talk about negative times. X-max, I don't know. I don't have any intuition about how long a race lasts. So currently we're seeing the first 10 seconds of the race. Maybe I'll change it so we see the first minute of the race, the first 60 seconds. Why men can be a zero? Um, why is velocity? Velocity can't be negative. 
Why Max? Again, I don't really have intuition here. I mean, let me try 200. This will let us look at what the car is doing as long as it doesn't get above 200 miles per hour. And we press graph, and we see my Y max still not big enough. So let's go to the window, and let's try 500 miles per hour. And due to this input lag, I type that 500 in the wrong place. Let's uh, go to where I'm trying to be, up to Y max. And let's type in 500. Let's press the graph. And now we can see the thing. We see the velocity increases very quickly. Then it starts to level out. As the drag racer approaches its maximum speed. If we wanted to, we could go back to window and maybe let's look at two minutes. Um, time is measured in seconds here. That's why when I say two minutes, I enter 120. Two minutes is 120 seconds. And I can press graph. And yeah, it seems to just be, just be doing this. So in the fast work, I can create a graph that looks like that. And you'll notice that I'm only showing the first quadrant. Again, that's because only the first quadrant makes sense here. Time has to be positive. Velocity has to be positive. Everything has to be positive. And that puts us in quadrant one. Any questions about this? I mean, it can definitely be the more annoying part of these problems when you don't really have a clear idea what the graph looks like and you're sort of flailing around in the dark with your viewing window. There's definitely some trial and error. But other than that, Let's see, I guess I want to come briefly back to the calculator just because one of the problems has a square root in it. So I want to make sure we all know where the square root is on our calculator and how to get to it. So the square root is hiding. It's up here, it's above the X squared button, and it's in the blue. And our calculator is color coded. You see up here, there's a blue button and a green button. So to get to this blue square root symbol, we press the blue button, you see our icon changes, and then we press the button the square root symbol is above, and that's how we generate the square root symbol. With that, I'm going to let you get to the class work. I'll be here 
we're wandering around a little. If you have questions, um, you do need your homework for this classwork. Homework, you need your calculator, is what I was trying to say. Um, if you didn't bring it, you can leave for today, but please make sure to bring it in the future. I have, again, I have a few spares just in case anyone forgot to bring their classwork in. You can throw up your hands. And I will let me end this recording somehow. Good.